Hello, welcome to Jan's Art. I'm introducing you to painting boats. I'm going to introduce you to wooden boats. It's always best to get to know them without the sails up and you can see how they're constructed. I found these lovely vessels in the harbour of St. Gustan in Ore. I'm introducing you to the boats via some photographs to show you how everything has moved with the tide and the weather. It did start raining at one stage so the water became a bit cloudy and the boats have moved round and round with the tide and there's more key showing. I do like to paint after the rain. It's very clear light. The rain seems to clear the skies and you get more reflections and slightly nicer colours. I've got enough here to make a start so I'm going to rub some of it back to make it a little bit lighter and then when I've got a few colours in it'll sort itself out. This is a crowded harbour, there are old buildings behind but as it's an exercise in painting boats I'm not putting the buildings in in this occasion because it makes it too cluttered. Having drawn the boats at a distance because they're out on the water it's worth finding one if you can that's nearer and having a good look at all the nooks and crannies and how it's constructed, how the sail's tied on and it'll help you with your drawing enormously. Having drawn as much as I feel comfortable with, I will add more detail as I discover it. If you start putting some colour in, it helps map the thing out and you find what you're looking for. You can get a little lost when it's a big pencil sketch. Normally I'd start a picture with the sky, but on this occasion there's lots of rigging to sort out and furled up sails. So what I'm going to do is start with the key and then the boats and that will give me some tonal values. So starting with the key it's just a few dabs here and there of warm and cool colours to indicate the cobbles. I'll add the mooring chains later. So I'm showing that the stones on the right are darker because they're still very wet and just a hint of cobbles in the other areas. The two yachts on the left hand side have both got white hulls but a distinctive wooden trim. Then I've got a green one and a grey one so I'll start with putting the green and grey boats in to get my scale and the right brush and then I'll move forward to putting the distinctive wooden line on the two left ones. These boats are quite different. The one on the right has got the bowsprit inboard and the one nearer the left has got it sticking out about two meters. You have to get to know what you're painting. I've started with the boat with the longest bowsprit and put in the very dark green sail cover and the gunwale. I usually start in the middle, even if I'm sign writing or something, I don't start at the front. Using the same colour green, I've gone for the boat next to it, which has a light green hull. They might not be exactly the same, but it gives continuity to try and use the colours more than once in a painting. But the boat on the right is going to be harder because it's got a bright red line, so I've got to be very sure where I'm putting bright red because it'd be hard to correct. I've now reserved more space by looking for nooks and crannies and the red line on the far grey boat and a little bit of mast. Now the masts have got ropes going down them so you won't always see a straight line. You can see a wiggle and a few more sail covers and a bag of sail. And by adding just a little bit here and there it's beginning to shape up. So what I'm going to do now is the reflections of the boat, not the water, just the boat. As before, I'm not starting at the edge, I'm starting in the middle and I've just put the reflection of the green boat in and then I'll work my way across and just add a few things. The boat on the left has also got the yellow line reflected but I can't put that in till it's dried a little bit. But the nearer the boat, the more you see and it can be disproportionate. The navy blue line on the bottom is much deeper in the reflection in, in the fact that it's twice the size compared to what you can see on the hull. But the boat's further away, the, the reflection diminishes slightly. I have painted the reflection of the sail covers and one mast so far and you can see that they're not 
straight lines, they're all zigzaggy. And that's because the water isn't a flat surface. I've now got all the reflections of the boats and the dinghies in. It's just a question now of adding the water and a little bit of rigging. But this way you've claimed the space and that the sky colour won't override. The next thing to put in is the key behind the grey boat. And then I've got some levels to get the water from. I already know the level is by the right hand side of the sloping key in front. I've put a thin line in that's not too strong a colour which you can see goes over the furled sails on some of the boats and that is the harbour and there's a bridge with three arches. Now, it's not apparent from this reference but I did do three or four watercolours on the spot which I'll edit in in a moment and you'll be able to see but you you need to get a some sort of level in before you put the water and it starts going uphill or something. I've just added a bit more colour and it will become apparent when I put the bridge in and a couple of more details but at the moment you can see that there isn't so much attention behind the boats because I want you to look at the boats but in front of the boats there will be blue sky. Now I've got more rigging to put in and a few more nooks and crannies but you can see that your eye is taken from the key to the blue water, to the boats, to the nondescript area behind. Before I started this watercolour I walked around the harbour and did a few other watercolours of the surrounding area. It had been raining and the water was rather brown but I got the bows of the boats which were all nicely lined up as the tide was slack at that point. One of the reasons the back of the harbour is very green compared to the where the bows are and the quay is that this river runs through the back of the harbour. It's got a lovely old bridge. Whilst waiting for the rain to clear I found a really nice cafe. It's always worth waiting for the right light or the right tide. You can see from these photographs that the reflections of the boats are perfect and so they're very easy for you to draw. The harbour bits and bobs are also worth painting looking at. This old stone post that they've tied ropes to, so many ropes tied to it, that it's actually got scars to prove it must be very old. Um, because it's a tight area what I've done is just torn a little piece off the rubber which is soft and pliable I just used a tiny ball just to go round and neaten things up. I've got a traditional round brush and a rigger. The rigger's got longer hairs and they will hold more paint so that you can do the length of a rope without stopping. I'm just working my way across the boats. It's up to you whether you put the registration letters in or not. These are all registered in the van area, so they start VA. I've now put a little bit more rigging in and the numbers of some of the boats and a little bit more definition at the back of the quay where there is an old building next to the three arch bridge. From this angle, I won't see the arches, I'll just see the change in the stonework. When painting the snow, the stonework just put in one warm colour and then a cool colour and it'll merge together. I'm only putting the two buildings on that are touching the harbour wall, in fact they're part of it, I'm not putting anything else in because it, they say it's an exercise in boats. If you're not sure about your drawing, turn the whole thing upside down and you'll look at it far more objectively and see if anything is blatantly out of place. I've used a rigger to start putting some of the lines in on the boats. Now some of them are curved and some of them are straight and under tension, some are rope and some are metal, so you've got to have a look. But I've used a rigger. To illustrate the point of painting rigging, I'm using an illustration of a tall ship here, which I found in St Marlow. But you can see that everything serves a purpose. And you've just got to look before you start and make sure you're confident. Now in this case, it's a crowded harbour. There's lots of buildings behind, but I wanted to emphasise the boat. So I've just put a sky in and I'm going to sort out the back of the harbour wall in shortly.
but some progress. I've put in lots of the rigging, working my way across gently, and the rigging is reflected in the water. So you just have to work out where to stop. You don't necessarily want to put everything in, just as suggestions. This picture is now finished in the, the fact that it was a demonstration on the boats and the rigging. I've brightened up the water a little bit and ignored the background because I want you to focus on the boats. <laughs>